In this video, I'm going to teach you how to turn weeds into wine. Taking these dandelions, we're going to make some dandelion wine. First, you got to pick all the dandelions. All you want is the heads. See? You just want the heads here, not the bottoms. Pick, pick. Takes a while. A little bit of work. So, when you do this, you want to make sure they aren't sprayed with any pesticides or anything. Or it definitely will not work. So, if you go to a park or something like that, it's probably not a good idea. Your own yard, neighbor's yard. Just keep picking. Get as many as you can. More the better. Still picking. We're almost there. Keep on going. The more you get, the more it tastes like dandelion. So, we picked our dandelions. The more the merrier. Got my stainless steel here. It's just like uh, if you were brewing tea. The more tea leaves, uh, the stronger it's going to taste like the tea that you're brewing. So I'm going to do three gallons, so I'm going to pour three gallons of water in here and bring it to a boil and then I'm going to let it sit for at least two hours. The longer the better, but try not to go over eight to twelve hours. Alright, so we brought our water to a boil. You can see all of our dandelions sunk to the bottom. I gave it an occasional stir. You can see it's like a tea now. It's not clear water anymore. So again, you let this marinate for at least two hours. Eight hours is even better, but you don't want to go over 12. So what we're going to do is we're going to strain this into this pot and then we're going to add our sugar. So what we did is we strained out all the dandelions here. And what I'll do is I'll put them back in the small pot and I'll press them and get as much of the liquid out as I can. Just like tea, after you brew tea, you get out as much of the liquid as you can so your tea is nice and strong. Alright, so we strained into our big pan. We got no more dandelions in there anymore. So now we're going to add our sugar. So, depending on how much wine you're making, think about two to three pounds per gallon. So, if you're making five gallons, do two to three pounds per gallon. We're doing three gallons here. So, I like to add a little bit of brown sugar just for taste. You don't have to do brown sugar. You can just do white pure sugar. So, this is still pretty warm. So, I like to dump that in when it's still pretty warm, obviously, because it helps it... Uh, Helps it mix in real easy. You just put that in. Now, for the most part, the more sugar you put in, the more alcohol you're going to get in the end. It doesn't mean you're going to have a better wine the more sugar you put in. It just means it's going to taste more like alcohol. You can always uh, have it uh, back sweetened after the fermentation process. Now, when I originally added the water, uh, I did a little less than three gallons, obviously, to make up for the sugar going in there. Uh, so we'll mix this up. Make sure you mix it real good. 
you're still going to let this sit on the stove till it gets to um, about 100 degrees. Then you can add your yeast. You definitely don't want to add your yeast when it's too warm because uh, then you'll just kill the yeast and then it's pointless. If you don't have any yeast, um, you could try doing this the cold way. So basically you put the dandelions in there uh, and you brew it with the dandelions actually in your container. Um, and then you're using like natural yeast. Uh, you'll get mixed results. If you use uh, store-bought yeast, obviously it's a controlled reaction, so you're getting a controlled result. All right, so that's mixing there. So I also like to add, this is all by flavor here now, uh, this is three quarters of a cup of concentrated lemon juice with uh, just a squeeze of lime juice. I put that in just for flavor. I also like to do uh, orange zest. So I zest the whole outside of the orange. Uh, then I squeeze all the orange and uh, make sure I don't get any of the pulp in there. And then I pour it in there. And that's basically just for taste. Um, usually two oranges per gallon I do. Uh, it's basically whatever you want to do on yours. All right, so here we're gonna zest the orange. See if that's coming out nice, gonna add some nice flavor. You can also add the orange on the second fermentation process. So you let it go through the first fermenta fermentation process about uh, seven to eight days. Um, then you rack it. Basically, you're taking the uh, the wine out, leaving the yeast at the bottom. Then you add your orange zest. Then I'd like to just add it now. All right. So make sure you check the temperature of your water. You don't want to put your yeast in when it's too hot. You'll kill it. You want about 9,500 degrees. And we're looking pretty good here. All right, so we're ready to put it in. So some people proof their yeast. That's basically put it in, uh, you know, warm water first and let it multiply in there. I usually just put it right in. Give it a good stir. Once I put the yeast in, I usually let it sit for about 15-20 minutes. Uh, then you're ready to pour it in your bottles for your uh, reaction to start. And um, we'll show you that next. Alright, so here's our gallon jugs here. We're doing three gallons. You can do any amount you'd like of the dandelion wine. You might ask yourself, where'd I get these cool glass jugs? Uh, you can go to any whole, whole food store. They sell the organic uh, apple juice in these, uh, which we love to make our cider out of, which we'll have another video on in the fall. So we use those uh, for our uh, cider. We do that in uh, six gallon uh, charboys. And then uh, we save these glass ones for when we're doing small batches of wine. And so we're ready to pour it in. Uh, definitely want your strainer. You're gonna spill a little bit, but who doesn't like getting a little bit messy? So before you put it in there, I'm just giving my pan a final good stir. Make sure that yeast is all mixed up. I let it uh, rest in there for about 15 minutes. Now I'm ready to pour it in there. Now notice how I didn't go all the way to the top. You want to leave a little bit of room here. Move on to the next one here. Oop. 
a little far on that one. It's okay. We'll pour just a tad bit out before we finish. Now you don't have to worry about your orange zest in there. See how it's floating up towards the top. If you did the orange, if you didn't, then that's fine. Uh, basically that'll pretty much fall to the bottom once it's all done, about seven to eight days. Um, and then when you rack it, basically racking is taking this from this jar into another jar and you leave the sediment and then you leave it in the next jar. All right. So you see these? These are wicked great to have. So basically what happens is, is when the yeast eats the sugar that we put in there, it's gonna poop out alcohol and carbon dioxide. So the carbon dioxide will come up through here. This is an airlock. So basically no bugs or oxygen can get in there and the CO2 can get out. If you don't have one of these, you can put a balloon on top and burp it, or you can put your lid on and then burp it yourself. You just gotta make sure you nurse it and make sure you do that. But these things are only about $3 at the store. Definitely worth the purchase. Um, if you can't get to the store, you can get them online. So basically you just put them on here like so. Press them on there. Don't worry about the fact that the water comes up over here. It's fine. As long as you have water in between there, you have an airlock. Basically, you just want to make sure that they're on there firm. So there you go. Now you have three gallons of dandelion wine starting. So basically tomorrow, you'll probably wake up and you'll see bubbles starting to form in here. Um, if you don't see that, then probably your house might be too cool. You definitely want it over 65 degrees. Um, if it's not over 65 degrees, they do sell uh, warmers for your bottles, but most people have their house over 65 degrees. And then the warmer your house is, is the faster that it's gonna happen. And you can basically tell when the fermentation process is completed because you'll see uh, the bubbles almost totally stopped. And then once that stops, your best bet is to uh, rack them. Uh, we'll do a video on that once we get there. Um, basically, like I said before, racking them is basically taking the liquid out of here into another bottle, leaving the sediment, and then you put them in that bottle. And basically, the longer you let your wine sit in the secondary stage, is the better it's going to taste. Um, sometimes I like to wait six months, sometimes eight months, sometimes I'm impatient and I start with one and drink it, but it is kind of potent and it'll taste, uh, you know, like dandelion rubbing alcohol. Um, it's not very tasty until you let it sit. That's basically why when you go to the store, you look at a bottle of wine and the longer it's aged, the more the price is. Um, that's basically because it's way smoother that way. So basically that's the first step. Um, when we get to uh, eight days or nine days, we'll do uh, the second video where we rack them into their new jars. And uh, then we'll do a third video uh, six months from now. And uh, we'll, we'll test them out and see how they taste. All right, if you have any questions, uh, put them down in the comment. Uh, make sure you like our video, share our video, and definitely subscribe to our channel because we have uh, other winemaking videos we have coming out. We love to ferment stuff. Uh, we have our little farm. Our seven kids will be on our channel. Uh, so uh, definitely check us out. Thanks for watching.